John Radke is the chairman of BioResearch Associates, and he's the creator of much of their instrumentation, if not all. Correct? So, John, tell me what you've seen, because you've been in this venue or this game for 40 years. How's it changed over the years? We talked about this a little bit earlier, but yeah. let's put it on camera. Well, <clears throat> um, it is, um, it's been a very slow process. The, um, typically, um, people are resistant to change, and I think in dentistry, uh, dentists as a group or the dental profession has been exceptionally resistant to change, um, but change has come in spite of it, okay? So, you know, when we, uh, when we started looking at how can we improve diagnosis, we started by um, saying, well, let's, let's record jaw movement and see what that looks like. And then let's, let's record muscle activity and see if that can contribute something. And then, and then uh, let's uh, monitor joint function. <clears throat> and to be honest, uh, in the beginning, we didn't know what we were going to measure. We didn't know what we were going to find. We didn't know even if it was going to have value. So we were just blindly moving ahead, and we developed the jaw tracking, the EMG, the JVA, and it's only when you have the tool and you begin to use it that you begin to see, oh, there is some value. Okay, I'm beginning to see something that's significant here. I see a difference between normal function and abnormal function. Right. And so, you know, you never know what you've got until you have it in your hands or you don't know the potential in advance. In my experience, most of the dentists that I have known in my career, and I'm a dentist, of course, um, things are very subjective. You know, it's more of an art than a science. Whereas I've always tried to practice more science than art. I'm trying to put numbers to things, not just, I'm an artistic guy, so I can get the art part down. But when I can put a number to something and reproduce it, that's good stuff. Because I'm finding later in my career now, because I'm getting older, been around the block a while, that instrumentation such as this lets me arrive at a, not necessarily definitive diagnosis, but a differential. And usually there's five, six, eight, ten different things going on, especially with a TMD patient. Or let's forget TMD for a minute and let's just talk about that confounding bite patient. Because unbeknownst to most of my peers, that's the TMD patient. And probably a third of the, actually more, and it's in the literature, Kirkos, 1987, and there's others. Over a third of the population that's asymptomatic has internal derangements. So I've used your instrumentation for what, going on seven or eight years now. And I evolved into imaging with MRI and CT. And I'm finding that it is a useful tool which you guys provide. It lets me screen everybody from age four to 100. And I'm finding that a good percentage of the time it's correct. Sometimes it surprises me. It's not 100% of course, you know. The only way to really know is to scan with MRI and look at soft tissue. But, but it lets me, that coupled with other objective looks clinically and other measurement tools, lets me decide when imaging is indicated. And I think that's the missing, that's what people in my profession miss at, to the patient's detriment. That's true, and it, it means that you're not taking a lot of MRIs on patients that don't need an MRI. All right. Okay, and you know, uh, the real, you know, purpose of the JVA is not so much to tell you definitively what's wrong, but just to indicate that there's a problem. Right. And so then uh, you know, okay, then maybe I better get an image if I want to yeah. really see exactly what the problem is. So JVA in that sense complements imaging rather than competes with it. That's right. So it's not an either or, it's a... You know, JVA is like step one, and then imaging is step two if it's needed. Yep. You know, I look at the JVA, I, I nickname it the uh, poor man's MRI. In other words, it's something that I have readily available in my practice that I can use rapidly, and it helps me screen. That's, that's what it's intended to do. And sometimes, you know, the JVA by itself, you'll, you'll get an answer, sure. and you'll be satisfied. Yep. And, he, and you'll say, okay, I understand what's going on with this joint. And the cool thing is, it lets me objectively create a record of the vibrations emanating from both joints at that point in time, and it gives me a um, range of motion. And I think it's the more serious damaged joint is when you're probably going to, 
you know, go ahead and get the MRI. Sure. And so you're not, you know, every time you get an MRI on somebody, you're going to see some significant, you know, thing in the MRI because you're selective as to when you're doing it. Sure. You know, it's interesting. Just last week, I had a patient that came to me with a, a broken veneer on her front teeth. She had most of her upper front teeth crown, she had, or, or veneer with porcelain. She had fractured, uh, fractured her, well, I think it was left central incisor, and her chief complaint was she wanted to fix that day. And I do cat cam dentistry, I can produce them the same day. But I was looking at not just the front teeth, I was looking at JVA, I was looking at range of motion, I was looking at all these other indicators, and they were screaming to me that this is a TM patient that's breaking down. And one of her chief complaints was the fact that she's having to repeat this stuff constantly. And all of a sudden, I backed her off, I patched up her, uh, her busted veneer with composite, and I convinced her, and she understood when I explained this to her, to, that we need to look at the soft tissue. Not just the heart, we're gonna look at both. We're gonna look at CT for heart tissue, and we're going to look at uh, the soft tissue, the MRI, to look at fat and look at cartilage and effusion, see if there's any inflammation present. So that's pending. That's only been three days ago, right before I came to this conference. But my point is, that's a real-world example of something that walks into many dentists' door every day. And until you've been in this long enough and you've seen, like for example, I mentioned a minute ago, range of motion is I have a digital record. If it's below 38 or 40 millimeters, that's a flag right there. And what if they're having trouble opening that full 38? That's another flag. What if their anterior teeth don't couple? That's another flag. What if their posterior teeth are intruded? Another flag. You know, we could go on and on probably for 10 or 15 minutes on these signs that I'm looking for, but the point is the JBA is part of how I make that decision as to whether or not I'm going to spend that patient's money and if it's viable and efficacious for me to do so. So I want to thank you for your contribution and I hope you keep writing, staticizing, doing research for another 40 or 50 years.